Hi, my name's Johnny, also known as Jotai in the FGC or fighting game community. I've been competing since 2010, so let's approach a topic that I feel is important to playing at your best while having the most amount of fun while doing so. Even if you aren't a competitive person, you still may be interested in how self-esteem impacts your performance and your ability to enter a flow state. In this video, I will be discussing how self-esteem, your personal beliefs about yourself, is one of the biggest blocks to performing at your peak and prevents you from entering a flow state. We will be incorporating the well-known concept known as mental stack, or the amount of things you can be on the lookout for at any given moment, and learning to prioritize what's important versus what's not. Give him another hand! The time! He did a talk combo to punk in grand finals of evil! Before we get into the nitty and gritty of peak flow state, let me start off by sharing my quote unquote tournament credentials with you. I started competing in Super Street Fighter 4 in Central slash Northern California. It's confusing, don't ask. Back when brackets were hosted on either Paper Brackets or Challenge.com or something, I don't remember the exact name of the website, it's super old. So I don't really have the images to prove I was competing, but just take my word for it please. But some of my later results, specifically the ones on Start GG, formerly known as Smash GG before Microsoft acquired them. My first documented tournament matches on the internet were from 2014 where I helped run, I also competed in a local game shop by the local community college where I live. On average, I would place in the top three and not to toot my own horn, but I would usually come out at the top at about more than half of these events. For plenty of other tournaments around this time period, and you just have to take my word for them because I can't seem to find the brackets and I don't want to spend my time searching for them. but. I was often in the top 3 of many local tournaments around the Central Valley, and at worst, just top 8. Live streaming tournaments was not a common thing around this time, and when I was still single and competing, I would spend a decent amount of money going to regional tournaments with competitors from all around the globe, such as NorCal Regionals to name one. I like to believe, at least for my standards, I did pretty well. I mean, you can see me losing to one of the greatest players in the states right here in one of the brackets I scourged the internet for. And trust me, this took a while for me to find. Around that time period, the last big tournament for me was EVIL, the largest fighting game tournament of the year. It was 2016, and I had started my first long-term relationship, telling her to give me to just one year to compete, and then afterwards she'll become my main priority. After that, I've gone to less than one tournament a year, hardly touching a fighting game. Trust me, maybe I'll play like a month a year at best, and that's not competitively, that's just picking something up and playing. On the rare occasion, I'll have a friend inviting me to a tournament and as you can see here, my results, they're not that bad, right? For someone that doesn't actually practice anymore. Well, I didn't win anything big. I still put up a decent fight through the brackets I entered, traveling in a Capcom Cup and Red Bull events and losing to some of the best players to ever grace our blue green earth. I mean, can you blame me for losing to Red Bull's sponsored player who won Street Fighter 2 HD Remix at EVIL 2010 Snake Eyes? And not only him, but the 2022 Street Fighter 5 EVO champion Hitbox Kawano? Like, uh, this is the top of the top here I'm losing to. No, too far away from the anti-air! The crush counter from Kawano! He gets the hit! Activation! Is this gonna be enough to kill? Is this gonna kill? It is! And Kawano takes it over item! In the most clutch victory you could possibly imagine! Now that I've gone over who I am as a player, let's move on to the main course of this video. Removing self-esteem from your mental stack so you can go all ultra instinct during your matches whenever you want. Or at least most of the time, because we're all human. A self-esteem will affect us every now and again. Regardless of any competitive game that you play, it's important to understand that you can't be on the lookout for every option all at once or you're spreading your ability to react far too thinly. The more things you have to look out for, the slower your reaction to those things will be. This is a rudimentary description of mental stack. So it would be advantageous for you to put your mental stack on the things that are likely to happen. 
When you see strong players make lightning fast reactions, it's not just about having fast reaction times, but knowing what to dedicate your mental awareness to and knowing what's actually worth reacting to. And a layer above that is being able to create situations where you limit your opponent's options so there's less things for you to be on the lookout for and you can minimize your mental stack so you have an easier time reacting to things. Okay, okay, we're getting a little too meta with the strategy here. So let's return to just talking about self-esteem and its relationship to mental stack. This isn't really something that's talked about, so I'm just kind of throwing it in as a personal observation of mine, but self-esteem is part of the mental stack for many players. It's what prevents them from consistently arriving at their peak performance within their current skill level. Going Ultra Instinct isn't about reaching the highest skill ceiling possible. On the contrary, I'd argue it's about letting go of your sense of self so you can utilize the full capabilities of your knowledge to perform without any doubt. It isn't some magic pill about always winning either. It's about playing at your best with no amount of mental energy dedicated to what if I win or what if I lose? That's just useless mental energy away from the match and just inner commentary that will slow you down and your ability to adapt and react. What's important is dedicating your resources to playing the game, staying present so no doubts about what if I look stupid and the light can penetrate your mind so you're completely absorbed into the match and making smart decisions. Part of making good decisions is throwing in some dumb ones to confuse your opponent, get them on tilt, and take advantage of that and go for the kill, but yeah. As an example, Let's say you were on the lookout for just three options. You could split your reactions evenly between these three options, but this is not usually ideal, as different options have different risk versus reward for them. A better usage of your mental stack would be to put more of your awareness to reacting to things that are more likely to occur or to options that minimize your ability to be in risky situations and give you the biggest rewards. Now let's bring self-esteem into the equation. If you dedicate a little into believing you're hot shit, it's a net positive and a feeling better. But there's still a bit of your mind preoccupied with your opinion of yourself. There's a downfall to this. If you're on tilt, what do you think is going to happen? That's right. That small euphoria will be flipped onto its head and turn into dread. And if you're one who easily cracks under pressure, well, your entire game plan is going to start to fall apart as you start to doubt yourself. An overwhelming majority of your mental stack will be converted into berating yourself instead of playing the game itself. So, a strong player is someone who has good enough composure that they're not worried about the outcome of the match. A player who is at their optimal performance is someone who can clear their head of all focus about themselves and deviate themselves fully to playing the game at hand. Of course, we are only human. We may not be able to fully enter this flow state all of the time, but if you're aware of how your self-reflection on your self-worth can hinder your performance, you're far more likely to catch it and make the conscious decision to let it go so the chances of slipping into a flow state becomes far more common. Even having an unhealthy amount of self-regard can build arrogance, making you less likely to be open-minded enough to accept feedback from your peers. When it comes to growth, you need to be open to having other people point out your weaknesses and being able to admit you're able to learn from other people. When you're arrogant, you're far more likely to disregard input from someone you deem weaker than you. While it is a skill to be able to discern if someone is giving you bad advice, being open enough to verify if the advice is good or bad and maybe need some top level refinement is something worth honing. You'd be surprised that occasionally the ones who will show off interesting scenarios aren't always the top level competitors. I'm gonna block this whack ass mix up. In every form of competition, there has to be a clear winner and a clear loser. There's no escaping this fate. So while there's no way to guarantee you will never lose again, you can minimize your chances of falling under pressure that will cause you to snowball into making bad decisions, usually resulting in a loss. In short, if you can be so present with the match at hand that you're able to forget about yourself, this is when flow will take over. All that's left are your actions and your responses, with no hindrance of you getting in the way and introducing doubt, which often creates either indecision or a delayed response. And as we all know, even a slither of a millisecond can be the difference between winning and losing. With this argument, I'd like to take a moment to share a story about one of my favorite Street Fighter players, John Choi, the Korean Inferno. <laughs> also, here's this really poorly made picture of him with Darude Sandstorm, Ryu Chuck and Duke in condoms and glow sticks. And no, I will not elaborate on the context. You'll just have to be confused about this if you don't understand the inside joke, but Anyways, oh yeah, future me saying, I'm probably going to add a piece of cheese to the picture. 
All you have to know about the Korean Inferno is that John Choi has been competing at Street Fighter since the 90s and has pulled some of the greatest comebacks in fighting game history, with one of his crowning achievements being him winning two different tournaments at EVO 2008. The first American player to do so and the story leading up to this magnum opus is one worth sharing. About a month before EVO, Choi's father was diagnosed with late stage cancer. He had to go to the hospital to have a risky surgery where he had to get his stomach cut out just to be able to survive. The surgery was 5 days before the tournament and with the stress of it all, John Choi had decided to be there for his father instead of traveling to EVO and competing. The surgery would be a grueling 10 hours for his father. Surely he would want him to be by his side after such a difficult time. But Choi's father approached him telling him he shouldn't miss out on the tournament just because of his situation. That he'll be fine, urging Choi that it was important for him to go and compete instead of staying here at the hospital with him. Right before going to EVO, he gave one of his final class presentations before flying off to Las Vegas. This changed John Choi's mindset when he set foot at EVO. He was able to play out of his mind. This is what being unafraid to lose does to a person. Choi had already fought a hard battle with the news of his father's illness and dedicated so much mental and emotional energy just for that. He had no more room for fear. The adrenaline kicked in for him to focus on the only thing that mattered, playing at his peak with no room for concerns about losing. Quoting John Choi from his post, where's the cheese? Playing to win is different than playing not to lose. If you play not to lose, you start to doubt yourself, become scared. I was never scared. I had a different mindset going into the tournament. He fought two hard battles in that short time frame, becoming the Street Fighter 2 Super Turbo and Capcom vs SNK2 champion that year. Taking down two of the best players at the time, Nuki and Boss, both from Japan. His father came out of the hospital in good spirit. And, funnily enough, after he won the tournament, he bought his dad a Nintendo Wii to help with his physical therapy. If this story doesn't inspire you to let go of your self-doubt and play your heart out, then I don't know what will to be honest. Perhaps the other years I went to EVO trying not to lose. It's easy to go to the biggest tournament of the year and be afraid of losing, but things were different this time. Yes, EVO is the world tournament that only comes once a year, but in the grand scheme of things, EVO is nothing. Around the world, people are fighting in wars, fighting for their rights, and some are fighting for their lives. EVO was just a little tournament. I went in with that mindset and played as best as I could without being afraid. My father was home battling for his life. My battle in Vegas pales in comparison. EVO ended. I flew back at 5pm Monday while studying on the plane and went straight to take my final exam at 6pm. I'm garbage and I'm proud. Garbage. 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 What the?